growing up in the hymn. But that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Let's get to say every wind of false doctrine. See, people can come along and get so caught up with a particular doctrine, they get tossed around with it and get in excess. We need to be stable. I'm going to say we need to be stable. We don't need to be flaky Christians. You know, what normal hate to say? God don't bless flaky Christians. You know, you get flaky, you don't you get out you get out of the plan of God, all right? So put Paul to and through it by every wind of doctrine, by the flight of men, and turning to craftiness whereby they whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, they go up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint requires, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. Making in, make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. And so we have here Paul Lane, and this is obviously at the end of a passage of scripture where he's talking about the body. But notice he wants us to be no more children. He talks about growing up. God wants the church to grow up. Now, I'm going to tell you, I mean, I remember a number of years ago, I met a man named Greer, talked about when he was a Christian, uh, that they just lived uh, and, and Barter the dead things with Zuzi the Wham Wham. Because they were the goodies. Everybody wanted Zuzi the Wham Wham. And I think the body crops that way a lot of times. They want Zuzi the Wham Wham. They, they want fluff. They want puff. They want to feel good. They want, uh, they want um, everything to be about them. And that's what, you know, back, back when the, uh, what, what we refer to as the word of faith is really a, is really a teaching of the Bible more than the, the word of faith. Paul says that it is the body of the people gift in the body. It wasn't that it was some completely gone. But I'm mean, growing up in the foundation. What, what gift did he recognize? Pastor and, and uh, um, evangelist. If you were a teacher, you were a Sunday school teacher. You weren't a traveling ministry of art. And you know, most churches, if you came in and taught and didn't preach, they throw you out. You know, you had coming in to preach. I mean, you had, and I, I love to preach. I, personally, I'd love to preach and teach any day of the week. And if I had a hat, I could drop it. Let me preach. I just be dropping it all the time. You know, one guy, one, uh, actually John Newton said that, uh, that, that Ed likes to preach, but he drops his own hat so he can. And uh, he's right. I love to preach. Hallelujah. All right. And so we can, we kind of can't live on Zuzi the Wind Wind. We can't go to service after service after service that just talks about how wonderful it is for us and how lovely it is for us and, and how we feel good. And how, we've got to grow up. We've got to mature in the body of Christ so that we, we come past the point of we only go to church and if there's something in it for us. See, that's just that babyhood stage. That's childhood stage. All right? I mean, I mean quite frankly, that's dog stage. I got a dog. We said, Daddy, come here, Daddy. Come here. Come on, come on, come on. I said, she won't come. Daddy, want a treat? You hear her hit the floor from where she is. So that's called selective hearing. Even dogs have selective hearing. And if they children have selective hearing. Nate, come down. It's time to clean the house, buddy. Nate. Nate. Nate, Nate. I swear I couldn't hear you. Nate. Sticking for her on the table. Amazing how fast he get done at the four-down blues and not show up to clean the house. Hallelujah. And you know what's so going to say to that. Hallelujah. Amen. See, in the body of Christ, here we go. Prosperity seminar, you can have what you say. Supernatural break, cancellation to fill the building. Then we advertise the learn how to keep your flesh under and deny yourself seminar. You don't have to get there early. You don't have to worry about pocket space. Come on now. See, we're sure that's that childhood space. We love it when they advertise all the, the, the wonderful. You're going to get rich quick. You're going to have, you know, supernatural debt cancellation. You have three houses. I mean, you're going to have a, a Mercedes Benz and, a, and a, a, for, your, for your casual car, a Bentley for your Sunday go to beach car. I mean, we love those things. But when somebody comes in to talk about building character, and integrity. You've got to 
give every time I hurt them, we try to give them a good one. I mean, we can we, we can the blue spot out after them. And that don't always work. Now, we're to grow up. Amen? This man of Jesus is such a thrill. You guys will have to lighten up a little bit and get this program and help me out here. Because we're not only preaching to you, we're preaching to the world, all right? So, in verse 14, it says, Henceforth, be no more children. Saul to and fro, cares not by every word of doctrine, by description, by the sight of men, and the fashion, whereby they lie and wait to the truth. Instability is a definite kind of maturity. Paul himself upbraids the Corinthians who are still bathed in Christ. That's what he first read in 3 1 through 4. After having been saved about five years before he began to do so there. And, and the writer of the Hebrews dealt with the same basic problem in Hebrews 5. Now, he says here, he says, uh, um, Whereby they were by fighting in plenty of craftiness. And let me say this, let me get into something here. Not everybody that preaches, not everybody that has a so and so ministry, not everybody that's on television, not everybody that likes a book, has a uh, proper motive. There are a lot of people who are in it for the money. They want, they want, the, they want the fame. They know that they're manipulated. They're just trying to get your money. The one thing you're always after, everybody's always after, is what? The money. And I, I'll be quite honest with you. There have been billions of dollars siphoned out of the local church to fund big ministries. Now, don't get me wrong about everybody, but I'm saying to fund things that really wasn't the plan of God. How do you know? Because the local church is the plan of God. It's okay to give, but I'm telling you, I remember one time I went to Billy Graham. There's somebody I knew that they gave to the church about $100 a week. This is nice. But they gave $2,600 a month away to other ministries. Four and a half times more they gave to the local church they gave to other ministers. Now, the problem with that is this. The plan of God's local church. It's all right to support other things, but your local church should be number one and take care of the best. And you've got people on television who do things that don't kind of get it. Well, some of them, years ago, he was trying. Somebody knew he was working, and they, they went to get to him. And he said, come on! And that was trying to build up some other kind of you know, television ministry thing. He, he got in the building somehow. He walked up to the guy, opened the door, went in, and counted the seats. Because the person was saying they had so many people sitting in front of the building, and they didn't have that many seats in the building. He counted the seats. <laughs> well, some of didn't play. <laughs> he quit first grade because they had recess. <laughs> Just kidding. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. He, he, he turned around to them, and, and he's done something. I forgot the whole thing. He did that. He's gone to a couple places and, and done stuff and, and proved that what they were saying on television wasn't accurate. He didn't make any sense. He said, don't buy behind the people from me. And then walked off. Amen. Oh, we've got 600 people coming. We've seen 200. Hello? Are you here? Yeah. We had, we had uh, 400 people in church this weekend. Well, we had, we had two services. But they didn't necessarily tell you that a hundred of them were holdovers between working servants that were workers and stuff. See, we need to have integrity in everything we do. In the ministry, we need to have integrity. But say all that. There are people who get on television and present one thing, embellish things. Have you ever noticed that a lot of things that I, I, I know I'm getting, I'm getting some attention? A number of years ago, we first came to Greek Road. Every guy was saying, okay, that's nice. Well, I'm not so sure. This guy was a, had a, had a, and he, he had been at the call center the year before and got a meeting every week. And he just came in and, you know, all that stuff. They did some things together. The, uh, some people that were in the church when I got there uh, had gone to that meeting. And they went, they said, well, so-and-so is back in town. We're going to go to the meeting. Are you coming? And they said, let me tell you something. If I can get to see you in the meeting on the inside, I don't bother. Now I don't go out to everybody. Well, I got anything on the inside. You know what I'm saying? I'm being loved by the Spirit. I just don't waste my time. I remember years ago, there's a young preacher going around. He's preaching all kinds of the gospel generation. He's preaching on the gospel. He's not a preacher. All those things. He's 23 years old. He knows, you know, and he, they're taking over getting their dad and letting them come along and all those guys. And they're, they're going to take over. How many of you 23 years old? You ain't been around long enough to know your head. I'm holding it right. Hello. It's kind of like the guy working on our car one day. We, we went in some of our van, and uh, the, the, the uh, service manager called him, and the mechanic told him. He went in there and came back out, and I'm going to tell you, he looked at all the 16. He gets out and goes, Man, 
And they're on beta. They end up sending a thousand dollar bow. And they're going to pay off the house. And they have customers that I'll send them out a thousand dollars and my house I'll pay off the next day. And they're going to always make this way to pay you that. Send you a thousand dollar bow. It's only a thousand dollars. What if I've got to send you to go down a thousand dollars and everybody can pay a bow? Under the guise that God will do something special for you if you give to them. Oh, you see what the Bible says. Bring the tithe into the storehouse and the offering into the storehouse and flew them in a whole year. Now, let me tell you, our church supports other ministries. We, we, uh, uh, we, we uh, check places out, places that we believe have relationships with us. Not just because they got on television and present something. To those we have a relationship with that we know. And we know what they're doing. Amen. And if you're going to give to them, it's a good way to, you know, find out what they do. Find out who they are. Find out what they're doing. Amen. Someone gone home? Everybody's still here. All right. So, we don't need to help people to make it happen to restrict them with the body. Back to the guys who went to the guy who talked to the to the Lord's side of the So they you know they got me and they came back and they were I mean they were so excited about this meeting. They had been there a year before and I didn't know all these cool things that happened. You know, and they the, the, the word of knowledge is going this this guy that's running this thing gets up, turns to his partner, the guy that was just proud of the guy walked with him, right at the offering time and goes and starts talking about how they're gonna do this. And he looks at the guy and says, I've never done it before like this anywhere. And the guy from the church Or he was just telling the fact he had such a new crowd that they wouldn't even remember he had done it before. And, and went through the process and it was exactly what he did with the people for the year before. Got the same thing. He used to use big offerings and pull for big offerings. And yet he did it because he'd never done it before. Why don't you do it? You know what? Because I've never done it before. I don't know if you have that thing to do it exactly the same way. I don't do it. The people get so dumb sometimes that they're in the headlights. You need to be a moonshine to go back. Hello? You can put your head headlights on the moonshine. He takes it in the town. You going to mess with me? You know, they come at you, man. Go, go away in your car. You don't want to mess with me. Dear the book of it. You can take your hand, man. And probably do it. <laughs> you think you're done some little, you know, little, little, Roll state with a butter in it. Hallelujah. So, <clears throat> these are the things that go on in the body of Christ. The mature Christian has to understand if someone's only willing to preach what you want to hear, they're sitting in church here. You listen to the wrong thing. There are churches who will not preach live life. They don't preach it. Why? Because 
that people don't want to hear. So they'll tell them what they want to hear to get back to them to make sure they put it up. And they'll give them every scripture. There's a church in this city that has a big sticky in the, in the foyer that has big for They talk to them, bring them, and they all go in there sitting talk while the preacher preaches in the background over there in the living room. They talk to the movies about uh, the, who, which son scored the most goals last week in, in, the, in the soccer match. Drinking their, 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 uh, their latte and eating their Christmas food. Catching up with your hand about you know, this or that. Or what, what's your handicap this week? Sitting up there, fellowshipping. Well, do that after church. Well, we don't have time, but that's a good responsibility. Well, you've, got to, you've got to use God's time. What do you mean? You've got to use God's time to catch up on your personal time. You're too doggone busy. Why do you have to put on your website that to do that to get the crowd is not to me to me to me? Oh, we can go to church every week. They don't care. They don't care if you're in a soji party. Men's fellowship are having soji parties. You think I'm joking. They go out and they get deep and they get soji and they meet and they smoke their, their soji and drink their beer and talk about, you know, stuff. And that's the men's fellowship. The church is empty. And the church is immature. And the church has no power. Come on. Well, we're not raising the dead. We're not casting out devils. We're not healing the sick. Come on now. There's not a revival. People in the church are fornicating and, and, and thinking they're under grace. Why? Because we're immature and we're letting Scripture use Bible Scripture inappropriately for their own gain because all they want is numbers in their buildings. And they'll argue, well, I've got 6,000 people. How many you've got? It don't matter. If you've got 6,000 sinners or people who are, under, who are not disciples, you're not doing your job. <laughs> yeah, but I've got to tell them what's going on. That's the problem. We're not growing up. Now, I'm telling you something. The Lord doesn't give a will if you have 6,000 people and you give away. Instead of following the church, we Christians should be obedient to Christ. Obedient to Christ and the ability to recognize religious charlatans are definite signs of Christian maturity. And here is <coughs> how many have heard this? Hallelujah. How many have heard this? Glory to God. Okay. Always making decisions in that circumstance right now in the name of Jesus. And thankfully, so we shall be all according to that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's go praise the Lord. Now, hallelujah. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. Look at this. How many heard this? Yeah, you come on to the What they're doing is not right. We need to walk in love. Oh, yeah. You're not watching in love. You're judging somebody. Well, we 
何がしっくりくるか。Did you hear Jesus say this? What's up? You got a question about that? You're not walking the road. If you were, we're just supposed to love everybody. I don't know who he Life is perfect, is it? I know things that I want that you can either stop doing and put another way and that cost you something. And it's not coming. He says, Wow, that's why I'm looking for. Um, I'm the church of the angel of Ephesus. These things say, say that he that holds the seven streets in his right hand, who walks in the midst of seven golden candlesticks, I know that work. And that takes them, that labor. And that takes them. And how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and it's pride them. Which say they are apostles and are not, and found them liars. Now Jesus commended them. Jesus, the head of the church, commended them for weeding out the liars. What we get today, when you try to say something, that's not right, you're not walking in love. That's what he says. That's not love. God loves everybody. What the world needs now is love, is love, and a Coca Cola. Come on now, the hippie thing. You know, everybody just loves everybody. It's all about love. Yeah. Well, Jesus said, I know your work and your patience and how you strive to love that the civil republicans are not and found them to be liars. And it's born and has patience in my name to say, Nevertheless, I have someone against you because I'll mess my first love. He did not tell them to find them out that Jesus was not right, was wrong. And that's that. He was in the process of committing to all those seven days were Jesus. But we get told by immature, unlearned people who've been taught by people. You can't judge what they're doing because that's not love. So you just have to follow after and walk in love. And you can't say anything about it. Now, Paul says, I'm going to say all the time, some of them judge my judgment and judge. Yet if I do judge my judgment and judge. Look, you don't want to be judgmental. That's what that's talking about. You understand what I'm saying? Love is. Like the, I, I know the King James says love leads the best. But you need to emphasize in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. It says love is ever ready to believe the best of everything. They're different. You don't believe the best when they're doing wrong. You want to. But you can't if it's, if it's obvious. The church needs to grow up. you got people walking around using love scriptures to manipulate the church into following them. Come on. You can't judge me. Did you? Well, my love for the body of Christ demands that I try you out. If you're a liar, it saves you. Because you're going to hurt them in the long run. Amen. Let's use that as our scenario. Somebody walks by you, they grab your child by the hand, they start walking off with you, and you go, I don't think I can love them really today. I will take you with me, and I will hurt you, and I will lay hands on you. Hard, fast, so where God rose, lay hands on them, and suddenly it's talking about separating people to the ministry. We had nothing to do with punching out of them. <laughs> oh, 
are you here? You mess with my kids, I'm gonna mess with me. Not and not all three of other of others to put me down and to hurt me. You all go to try to walk off the I don't believe it's a sign of the time. It's like some trouble, and I'm not going to that is not love for Christ. That is a method of Satan to, to, to emasculate the church so the church won't grow up and be wise. Are you here? People go on and preach each other. I'm not going to do this all the time. I'm not going to do this all the People go on and preach each other. They'll come up and say, Listen, oh, you've got to walk in love. That's not love to say that. You see, what they've done, this is not talking to each other every day. They take the teaching of love and take it to that extreme where it's no longer love, it's, it's, it's opposite. You know what opposite is, don't you? You stick your head in the sand and say, drop kick and stay, you get to go for your life. Okay? Naivety, being naivety, is not love. In other words, you just don't believe everything you hear. But if the mouth of two or three witnesses, then you believe that and then you believe the judgment is going to take place. So you preach yourself out there and you can just come on and say, Look, this is the Bible. It's teaching you that life. You're not walking in love. Have you ever seen the Bible's basis? All those that say you're not walking in love are taught the basis. Isn't it amazing? So in the end of the day. And the grace that frees us. You know, it's, it's, it's not even grace. It's really not grace. It's not teaching the true grace of God. But when it's teaching under the guise of grace, I mean, we can call it radical grace. It's radical grace. There's no part of the Bible called radical grace. There's no radical love part of the Bible. You don't need to turn it all the time and, you know, and get an edge on the subject. Why don't we teach the subject and let the subject stand on the hand? Hello? And so it's got to be, we got the radical revelation of the radical grace. Radical faith. Radical wealth. Radical giving. How about this? Bible grace, Bible love, Bible faith, and Bible giving. Amen? And then, listen, let me tell you something. Don't get mad if somebody, if somebody challenges what you teach or believe. Is this Bible? It can be, I said, I mean, you guys don't say this, but you can't be a person. You can talk to your kids on Monday night, and I can talk to them. You have to teach them to grow. Why not? Why not be that person? You know, if you have questions of what they believe, but if you believe it and talk to them, it it, it can stain the exegesis of the scripture. And then you're you're breaking it down, you're studying it, you're proving it out. It can look stained out if it's it's thoroughly scripture. So you don't have to get that kind of way. That I don't have to. Now, we've got, we got two extreme parts of the Bible. I'm not going to tell you for someone now who doesn't belong to the church. We don't pretend to be a church. Okay. Well, that's what the book of Corinthians says to come boldly to the throne of grace in a time of need. It's not a time to listen. To help you in that time of need. What kind of time of need? You get fed? John wrote to the church one day, right before the Gnostic. The whole first chapter doesn't belong to the church. It's to the main church. Why is it that the whole first chapter doesn't belong to the church? Then the blood of Jesus doesn't speak to him and he can't use long life to speak to him. So that's in the first chapter. Oh, that belongs to the Lord. He can't have it both ways. He can't have it hidden from his kids and shoes. Hold on. I got something for you. Now, 
God can tell you. If you believe what you like in the gospel and reject what you don't like, it is not the gospel you believe, but yourself. Now, this was several hundred years ago. If you believe what you like in the gospel and reject what you don't like, it is not the gospel you believe, but yourself. That's heavy. That's what we've got so much called. Jesus calls them again. So there he is. Jesus calls them again. There it goes. You all right? Everybody always know what that was about? That was it right there. What does it mean? Because if you're picking and choosing what you like and don't like, and you're living life according to what you like and don't like, you believe in what you believe and not what the Lord says. So the Scripture comes contrary to what you believe. You've got to change. You're going to change the Scripture. When the Scripture tells you something you don't want to hear, you have to change. Not justify why you don't have to do it. Amen. Alright. That was that was good that we had it in there. I thought it was I, I thought it was more that it was in the church I think I need to talk to you about this. Grow up in Christ. I'm not familiar with any of the rest of that. Grow up in Christ means we put off the things of the flesh like that and of the flesh. You know what I'm saying? If we put off the things of our own personal desires. Let's face it. When people go around and only seek to see more, here's what they're doing. They're catering to your desires. And on top of that, it's going to be amazing. You have to get bad deal. Because the pastor's come out and bring this real mess and just fire the people's stuff and not teaching the whole side. Hello, are you here? You don't know me? And so, we love the Father. All the time. That pastor's got to tell you, you can't do that other way. That cattle man's going to tell you to do that. Are you here or have you gone home? Pastor's got to deal with, you know, the, the junk of, of you don't believe spanking your children. Well, go ahead and be stupid. That child of you. Well, the Bible says he who shares the rod with you. And remember that old country say, "Spare the rod, full of That's not what the Bible says. He says, "He who spares the fish is fine." Why? Because the rod of correction is like rebellion, falling to the heart of God. Bible says. Now, the the fruit taking, thought followers. I'm not talking about the forty year old thought. I'm talking about Benjamin Dr. Benjamin's thought, who wrote the book on child rearing, and he was he, he was. He, I don't know that. I don't say it. He was good with that. That's not only. He, he was a pediatrician. He wrote a book on child rearing. Look, you don't spank your child because you teach him to do it. You don't tell them because you break it. No. You spank your child to teach them their limitations to behavior and consequences of fear. Hello. And you tell them no to teach them the, the parameters of life. Hello. And what we have, we've got a generation right now of worthless kids of God. That whole generation called Fox Books are a bunch of men who came to be manipulated. We don't know the first thing about child rearing or anything. Hello. And now we can't we can't have an athletic event and, uh, and, and we're going to be 12 that everybody doesn't win. And they all have to get trophies. Because everybody. If you just don't have those four names in your skill set and you take them lessons and you just can't develop them, maybe there's something else in life that you're supposed to do other than get a trophy for being bad. If you can't sing, if you just can't carry a tooth in the bucket, as my parents used to say, and you've taken nothing, and you're all stuck, between the white and black. So when, they, when, when the white goes to classroom, you're here. And when the black goes to classroom, you're here. You're just out there in the middle of nowhere all the time. Then maybe you shouldn't be leading worship. Come on now. Come on. That old song used to 
have out there. There is no good in this. Take them to the cross. And only some of us can talk to about the Lord and give them a chance. And they got to get some, but this one was kind of a, this guy had been in church all the time. He never got to see him in front of life. He couldn't see him. He just couldn't see him. But on the day he died, they came to church that morning, and the and the place lit up with this beautiful voice coming out of heaven. If you let the children go to find out in the cross, you need to let the children go. They didn't forget about that. Well, he's in the heaven of the Now, let me say that. This is a point. This is a side point. Of the final thing to do. And you can get that. Everything you can has to be settled. Everybody has to have a solution. The problem is, I mean, in the church. Have you seen the poster stamp? Justice, such and such, equality. Equality is a buzzword for socialism. Equality is not equal. Equality is making, making sure by the government enforcement that everybody is equal. I don't believe in equality. I believe all men are created equal. But what you do with you, what you're, you're created equal, and what I do with my created equal, is how we end up. And it's not fair if I do better with God and you take mine and get me to be different. This is what it is. This is part of the nature of both of us. Everybody's trying to get there. And so we've got a mindset in America, especially in Africa. Look what you're saying. And there are people hungry for God. They're willing to get up there if they don't want God. They'll just stand in the rain of church. They'll, they'll, they'll pile a million people into the building so they can have church. They do. They walk in dust storms. They do, you know, they're out, they're out in the bush. They're, 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 they're taking the light and they're communists in this country. They find their Christians will kill them. They go into Muslim areas and the Muslims find out their Christians will kill them. And here, we're concerned about whether or not we have the smoke show that we have to do. In my mind, I said, you got one up front. You got to go to the light and put it on. I'll, I'll, I'll do it for that. Anyway, I'm sorry. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. Hey, But when you get concerned about success coming, we don't want to have grace where there's no responsibility to make the decision. We want to be able to do whatever we want to do without consequences to any consequences to one another. But the stars of the time will say you look and they'll treat some of them and they'll actually get to the nation. So they get this nasty doubt about no responsibility. Call it grace. That's the danger. And it costs the church. And as churches will open up, they will have church open up and not only a tenth of it will only buy a church a little over a year ago. We've got about a thousand people. Is it worth it all that time? Not so much as they hurt the church. But you take a hundred, hundred and fifty pound of pizza out. Why do you do it? They walk in the door. They find out you've got to take the church out. Well, who do you have to have a church for? So I go, I go to church. Next week, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more. You're the head of the church. I'm going to give you something to go out of. And you're not there alone if you want to have church in your life. You'll get to get some church in the church. But to open your church door. Some people go to one church and others go to the other. Why did they open up there? Because they needed to have a local church back home. I just get over this mess. I just get over that where there's Christians in the church. So I don't, why I call on them and go to the local church, well, I, I would like to pass a such and such church and find out who it is. Everybody that knows me, I'm a strong Christian, I'll get over it. So what are you going to do? You're going to get a lot of these people showing up at church service because they, they like the ministry. They don't have an understanding that you can't say I'm not a Christian because I'm not in the church. Well, they're going to tell you this day because it's true. You can tell them now why you're a Christian here just because you like having your own money. But the babes are going to have to follow after you and work what God has planned to do. Who will do that? I don't know. I don't know. Let me see if there's some Christian up here tonight. Some place out in the middle of nowhere with a 1600 people in the town, and you can start 
for shopping? Why not? And people help these Christians. And because they get so many people coming, you know, this place can go. You can go to Tulsa and start a church, and you'll get, you'll get three, four, five hundred people just off of the office and uh, get drunk. They're all right, get drunk. And they say, Take this church, put some name in my name, they come in, put some there, and then mad at everybody. If you come in, well, I'll just get there and find you. Put three or four, four, five hundred good friends out there. Scatter sheep. See, really, you can get to that point about where you're looking at it, and you can just take the and it will grow up. Don't like what I said, so they're going to come to me. Maybe you might think you're going to have to do it. I don't care. You've got to be careful with this stuff. You might offend some people. They vote for it. Look, I don't vote for people who are pro-gun and pro-abortion. I don't care who they are. We're all of them. Hello. And I don't support party platforms that way. And the abortionists are going to thank God. Are you here? It's Planned Parenthood. Everybody, if you know what Planned Parenthood is started for, then you ought to be able to hear me. That's what I'm here for. They know how to say amen. Do you know why Planned Parenthood is started? You go back and study it out. To control and limit. Their whole purpose of existence in this party was to keep black folks from having their hands. You just don't even say that is exactly why they came in here. And you got all these punkies on here talking about great coming down over there. And you call people who don't want their support. They're calling all the other people the rest of the white races and stuff. Don't talk to the kind of people that have no real faith in the world. That's who the races are. Vote for people because, because they're our what is our what political party is running, or they're our right hand color. Are they going to give us that? Nobody is ever going to give me any money except the promise that they're going to give me something next time they get elected. Let's take the unemployment statistics from Brock when Bush came in our office to Brock. Brock is just like this. And where they are now. Let's take the unemployment statistics. And he says, I still believe in the Lord. <laughs> My daddy! That's what it's come down. What it's come down to what? Come down to all people. Are you here? This is my study of the This is why you don't. So this is what my study of the world, particularly in America, in a peaceful state of the church. And the church. Doesn't have the backbone to stand up and say it's time the church stops messing around. Why did John the Baptist get his head cut off? Because he dabbled in political in the political arena. Because he told Herod it wasn't right for him to have his brother's wife, and went out and preached about it all the time. Are you here? So his brother's wife, the harlot, got fed up with listening to that Holy Ghost preacher talk about it won't right for him to have her. We don't need any political thing. Where are the Holy Ghost preachers? Where is the church 
see, as long as you keep boiling it down to the church and don't demand people grow up, they're not going to grow up. Can you still cut your feet up to this church and they're still teaching? There's a problem. You have a personal name in faith. Are you here? Now listen, I'm going to go now. I'm going to ask you to go up here. Those that set my feet up to the feet of the Lord. This is it. This is it. That's what we got to do. What you got to do is just have to be set up in the Lord. Yes, you can call the night. No, I can't. You can't grab that and hurt the baby. It'll hurt the baby. It'll hurt the baby. It'll hurt the baby. It'll hurt the baby. You know, Jesus called the night because she's about, I don't know. Jesus called the night to hurt the baby. He goes, the baby. Y'all don't know that. Oh, Lord. Y'all know that's right. Poor, the baby. Y'all know that's right. 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 Pick it up and get that. Take the the manly way. We all hear you go home. But the church is so immature that we let the world affect the church. Now, you can't speak about this. You can't speak about that. You can't do this. And so then we get blindly followed. People are blindly following politicians today. Let me tell you something. I know I, I mentioned politics in here, but it's, 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 like, a, it's like a parable. It's like a Starting back about 15, 16 years ago, the educational monster basically became the dumb down of age. They're going to graduate people who can't read and write. Hello? Now, this is the secret. With the time, with the technical and the time, Asian percentage of the income students that come out of the local Chinese school have to take the government. They have a diploma. And I sound like say this, and I repeat it this. We have gone down society deliberately. The education system has deliberately done it for this purpose. I'm educated. They can't read me. For themselves, and they were living in anything they say. And so we have the media. Media that is all the liberal media. Of this whole monster of repeating things over and over. Which lie teaches that? Which lie teaches that? Did you hear anybody say, Barack, Barack lie teaches that in the North East of the Desert North? Remember that storm that came in up north and, and uh, that, that North East came in and did basically the fight about as much damage as it was done down there. We were there, that fight was there. It's significant damage there. And much later, the people still don't have their houses, they don't have any food. They don't have any electricity. There's no monster out there on the media. Why? Because it doesn't fit into what they want. People have been deceived by being undereducated and uneducated in a school system that taught them to be educated. So what's this got to do with the church? Now we've got Satan who's been pastor, not to educate the people in the scripture. He's used to only paraphrase it. Who about this thing you look at there? Purpose driven business. Okay, life, church, the guys who get here. Now, who doesn't go take for a reference? You know, the message I'll go take for a reference to, you know, a little bit different take on it. I don't mind paraphrasing for that church. <coughs> you cannot just paraphrase the doctrine. Now, in his book, who does it? Doesn't cite it at the source in the back of the book of that, but you know, who, who reads the citation? How many read the book and go back and read all the citations? Okay, Gina. All right, Gina. Other than Gina, who does that? Mr. C. All right, Mr. C. We have two people out of this room that go read all the citations. In other words, a scripture reference in, um, in the middle of a chapter that he's 
make a point. And they just want to get a point to get a point out of the And that way, it's just fine. Because it's too distant. It's just an addition. Talk to my wife and turn together and make a point to get a point out of the If you're not saved, you can't do it. If you're not saved, you can't do it. 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 You don't tell the church to save until you're saved. Please don't. Hallelujah. We're going down the church by teaching touchy doctrine. We don't teach the truth. We teach what people want to hear so we give the point to our head. We hold seminars that we never fill the building with people so they come and give money. We need the council with the whole council. We can't preach the whole council in one church. I don't know. There should be the ongoing preaching of the whole council and not just one of these churches. No, I didn't want to preach that little thing in the home of the church. We can have what you say. If I don't preach the whole council for some of that, you're getting it wrong. If you can't have my life, I don't think I'm going to have church. You can't have my talk, I don't think I'm going to have church. You can have what you say as long as what you say faith for it has been produced out of, a, out of a study of the Word of God where faith comes from and the whole counsel of the Word of God. I can't have anything I say that's not Bible. I can have what I say and what I study to the Bible from it and I'm good with Scripture. But you see, we don't want to talk about those things anymore. We don't talk about that way can you say you can have the church. We teach that you, you can have the title of the but the, the whole church is about, you know, you got to have faith, you got to get to the Word of God, you got to study the Word of God, you want to have faith for it, and you can believe you can have what you say. That was the whole sermon. But you know, you just keep trying to live this, and you're always trying to teach things to get to the Bible says, uh, people who have been in the church of Jesus for 150 years, ever learn, and never learn the same thing about the Bible. That's crazy. That's very scary. We've got to grow up. We've got to have a desire to be solid, well rounded well founded We need to be working, we need not to be found. But we rightly divide the word. I'm not talking about we can be rightly divided, guess what? We can be wrongly divided. Thank you for your opinion. We're going to grow. We're going to grow up. We're going to get standing together in the church. Oh, I'll never get to go on again. They've got 600 people that attend us. What do they preach? They don't have preach any one to save you, drink wine, one more on them, because they don't raise no matter what you do. They don't get paid by the church after the church goes. But they teach you that. Not saying that they don't know what you do if you go on there. Why do you tell people that? Because I don't think they do the things you want to do to get to get paid. The Bible says that we will not be able to get them into the church. They give them a basis. We've got to teach them The Bible says to put off the old man and, and put on the new man. The chapter Christ is still getting all right with the chapter. Just the whole thing is still supposed to grow up. You're supposed to put off that old thing. That's what the Bible says. So why are we telling people that they're going to want to do and they don't do it? Because it's sick of their ears. And they can't handle truth. I'm not sure they can do it. But they have told me that. Let him be my brother's light and bread. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But you didn't come out of the church. You didn't come out of the church. You didn't come out of the church. Amen. You give me one thing on one Sunday morning, and you'll see him. I was in the store the other day with someone. Same day. Oh, I was in a motorcycle. I didn't even have a sister. Uh, I had to buy bacon and crackers. I was all about 
I didn't want to be all by myself, so I went to Moses. And this guy had this whole petite straw that he put into his feet and put his feet the whole time. I was in the store one time and, and, and picking down an aisle, and there's a two year old in the middle of the aisle kicking his feet, throwing a temper tantrum, and the mother's just standing there like, you okay? And I was thinking, who's standing with you now? What's up? Who are you standing with you now? I mean, we give them all. I mean, we just give them all. We had to find a dance floor. <laughs> are you here? The Lord just began to let me go. He doesn't do it to sit down with you. He doesn't have to be, you know, your dog dying and all that kind of stuff. That's not chasing you. Thank you. 